Hey y'all, and welcome back to Damien After Dark. I'm so excited to have you here. We're going to be recapping the latest episode of Baddies Caribbean. So if you're here for it, then baby, you've come to the right place. Okay, you better believe we gonna what? Talk about it. Welcome back to Damien After Dark. If you're new here or you have not subscribed yet, please click that subscribe button right below this video so you can stay locked into all things Damien After Dark and you can never miss a beat, okay? Also, if you don't mind clicking that thumbs up button right down there, liking this video, that helps me get into the YouTube algorithm so more people like your beautiful self can find me and I can continue to get rich. Just kidding. Maybe not. <laughs> um, Get in the converse, uh, join the conversation, get in the comment section. I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions on this week's episode. It was a juicy one. And last but not least, if you would like to join the Damien After Dark movement in the description box below, will be some ways that you can donate using PayPal, Cash App, Venmo, and Zelle. I'll also post my Amazon wish list for anyone that chooses to take that route. And my birthday is in six days, June 17th. Gemini baby. Woo -woo. Um, shout out to all the Geminis out there. Happy birthday to everyone that's birthday is in June. Okay. Um, let's get into the episode. Um, Oh, and thank you all that are listening to the Damien After Dark podcast. If you haven't or you can't watch the podcast live on Sunday nights, go and listen to the podcast on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, okay? If you can't listen on Sunday nights at 9.30 live, the next day it will be available on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Now, the cool thing about Spotify is you get to watch the visual, just like this, okay? So, the same thing you watch on YouTube, you'll get that same thing on Spotify as well. Apple Podcasts is just the audio version, but I thank you to everyone that has been supporting that, okay? So this episode begins with the whole Jayla versus Meatball thing. You know, the whole issue with uh, Meatball thinks that Jayla bullied Biggie, so Meatball approaches Jayla while they're on their nature walk in Barbados and says, hey, you know, What's the issue? Why are you bullying Biggie? Bully me, Jayla. Bully me. Do y'all think Jayla bullied Meatball or Biggie? Do y'all think Jayla bullied Biggie? Because Biggie told Meatball about what Jayla did and about what happened. And now Meatball is somewhat fighting Biggie's battles for her in a way and saying, hey, you step to Biggie, step to me in the same way. So I want to hear from y'all. Do y'all think Jayla bullied Biggie? Meatball thinks, uh, seems to think so. Now, I feel like we've been dragging this situation between Jayla and Biggie. It's we're on what episode six, seven, eight, whatever. We're dragging it. Like, can we move on? Just like the whole Gretchen and the N word thing. There's no need to spend five, six, seven, eight episodes on this. Do y'all not have anything else going on over there on the islands? I'm sure there's more that we could talk about, right? And like I've said before, I do think that this should have been dropped in Miami after the Miami dinner. And I was on Jayla's side in the beginning. Y'all know I have never been a Jayla fan. But I was on her side at the beginning because Biggie did talk a lot of shit in her YouTube videos. And Biggie did say, you know, I'm going to slap you. It's almost like me getting up here and talking shit on my videos. If I tell, if I say I'm going to slap Jayla and Jayla sees me out, I can expect her to press me, right? If I say I'm going to slap one of you guys and you see me out, you're going to press me right you're gonna slap me bit so i was on jayla's side with that but where jayla went wrong is that she continued to press the issue um did they or did they not move on in miami y'all know my memory ain't shit um maybe they didn't move on but i know they addressed it and it almost seemed like it may not have this may not be the facts but my perception is that Jayla continued on to show out in front of the Claremont twins. It seemed like Jayla wanted to get her moment. Like, look, girls, look at me. 
you know, watch me beat up on this girl. Let me show you I'm the true baddie. Let me show you I'm a real baddie when it really didn't come off that way, Jay. Just going to be real with you. Um, now, we find out in this episode that allegedly Meatball and Tinka Bella are blood-related sisters. Now, did y'all know that? Because I didn't know that. And I'm just like, look, I, I don't know. Because we know, and like I, I said this in my live video, I'm, I'm, so nobody get offended because I'm half black so I can say this, okay? But we all know, and you know, it's not even just a black issue, but a lot of black folks, we like to say, this my cousin, this my brother, this my sister, when it's not blood related brother and sister and i get it y'all i know that some people grow up with people that are not their you know actual relatives but they call them their brother or their sister because you know some people say blood doesn't make family and i, I can agree with that in some instances right um but if we're going to speak facts here are meatball and tinkabella actually sisters do they share the same mother or father because here's the thing even if they don't share the same parents a mother, a shared mother or a shared father, to me, still makes you brother and sister. Me and my brother don't have the same father, but we, we would never say that we're stepbrothers or that we're half-brothers. Do y'all know what I'm saying? Um, I don't know. I was like, I kind of, I squinted and I was like, okay, I guess I could kind of see it. Now... Diamond the Body has an issue with Tinka the Bella. Tinka the Bella. <laughs> Tinka Bella. Diamond the Body has an issue with her, rightfully so, because Tinka Bella keeps using this reason, uh, using the insult that she looks like a monkey. That Diamond the Body looks like a monkey, right? We've seen um, recently in the headlines where Erica Mena got a lot of hell for calling Spice a monkey. The only difference is Erica Mena is a, a Latino woman not a black woman so um she got a lot of hell for it now i don't think it's i don't think it's right for tika bella to be saying it just because she's a black woman to be calling another black woman a monkey i don't think that's right um but you are bleaching your skin tinka so for you to be bleaching your skin and calling another woman a monkey it does look like self-hatred it does look like you have an issue with darker skin people it does look like colorism i'm just gonna be real that's what it looks like to me it may not look that way to you but if somebody is bleach if somebody is a darker skin person and they're bleaching their skin and then they're calling other dark skin people monkeys it says that you have some insecurities that you're battling with yourself because i think diamond the body is beautiful gorgeous she doesn't, I mean, and she, to me, Diamond the Body is prettier than some of the light-skinned people on that cast. And Tinkabella, you are gorgeous the way you are. I don't understand why you need to, feel like you need to bleach your skin. But again, we have the same argument. I tell you guys all the time. That's why I try to be as fair as I can when I do my shows because who the fuck wants to watch hypocrisy, right? Um, the same way I talk about Diamond the Body or Tinkabella bleaching her skin, I talk about me tanning my skin sometimes right using a self tanner especially during winter months i promote and i have a self tanner that i promote and sell of my own um so who am i to tell tinkabella not to be bleaching her skin but i do look at you side eyes sis when you calling folks monkeys and shit stop it um now it's aubrey's last day with the baddies aubrey has clocked in and worked for her check unlike the Claremont twins, and unlike Tommy, who we saw left this episode, I'm sorry, I don't know why my nose is itching, y'all, so if y'all keep seeing me do this, I promise I'm not on cocaine or anything, I don't know why, I'm just like, itching right there, um, does that mean something, am I gonna come into some money, um, but yeah, unlike Tommy and the Claremont twins, Aubrey came in and said, Beep, let me clock in. Matter of fact, not only am I going to clock in, let me work overtime, bitch. I'm going to stay work some overtime. Um, I'm low-key sad that Aubrey's leaving because she was doing a good job on this show. I think a lot of people can speak for that, that they enjoyed Aubrey's presence on the show. They enjoyed her confessionals, you know, um, that she was... Uh, being a little bit messy this episode but what i like about aubrey is there's a reason why aubrey's done 20 plus reality shows producers know what they're hiring when they get her 
right? If there was a reality show for, if there was an Indeed for reality TV, producers would look at Aubrey O'Day's resume and hire her really quick because she knows what to do authentically and organically. She knows how to come in and create a scene without doing it, you know, fake, manufactured. Um, so I'm going to miss Aubrey. And when I say she clocked in for some overtime on this episode, we all saw how she went and let Miss Bianca, uh, told Miss Bianca exactly what we were all thinking. Well, a lot of us were thinking, um, and it surprised me. And I'm speaking on Bianca saying that her man is a millionaire. Now, apparently Bianca was saying this a lot while they were filming, um, this is the first time I think we heard her say it, but according to Aubrey, she says that a lot. My man's a millionaire. My man's a millionaire. My man is a millionaire. And listen, Bianca does like to brag and boast a lot. I saw her on a, uh, she was, she was just on, y'all know she's on the show coming up Miami on now that's TV. And they went on a podcast. The cast went on a podcast while they were there. And she couldn't shut up about knowing Cardi B. Cardi B's my best friend. Don't talk shit about Cardi B. That's my girl. Don't talk about Cardi B. Like, Bianca, you be going so hard for these people who don't be going hard for you. You went the same. You went just as hard for Mariah, and she didn't go a quarter as hard for you. Is Cardi B gonna go as hard for you? I don't never hear Cardi B talking about Bianca. Um. But Aubrey clocks uh, uh, Bianca when she says, my man's a millionaire, my man, my man, my man. And Aubrey says, well, how many times you got to say that, boo? If he was really a millionaire, then why are you here? Oop. Which somebody in the comments had said, you know, is she not? Is Bianca not allowed to make money because her man's a millionaire? And I don't think that's the case. I think she's allowed to make her own money. If I had a man, well, actually, I can say that I, the guy that I talked to is a millionaire. Not to brag, like Bianca. Because if I wanted to, I could have bragged and said that plenty. Of, if I wanted to, I could have been up here and said, and I can't say he's my man. But the guy y'all hear me talking about that I go back and forth to Florida to see that I really care a lot about, millionaire, got money. Um, but I still work. He's not paying my bills. I wish. That would be nice. Um, even if he did want to pay my bills, I still have work ethic. I still want money that's coming directly to me, to my name, so nobody can say, hey you're cut off or nobody can say i'm not paying for that y'all know what i'm saying never depend on nobody for shit i don't care if you're a woman i don't care if you're a gay man i don't care who you are never depend on anybody for nothing because at the end of the day all you really have to rely on yourself is you and if you're watching this and you rely on somebody this is your sign to start you build you a nest okay fly away little birdie every now and then and take you 5 10 15 20 dollars and put it into an account put it in a shoebox, put it somewhere and build you a nest because you never know when you're gonna need to fly away to that nest okay don't say i never gave y'all a game um i think the real issue here with Bianca saying her man's a millionaire over and over again, and then Aubrey saying, you know, if he was a really a millionaire, why, why would you be here? I, I kind of, I don't, I agree with Aubrey with that sentiment because most of these girls, if they had a man who was a millionaire, and you had a man that wasn't stingy, let's keep that in mind because he can be a millionaire and he can still be cheap. Okay, so if you got a, most of us, if we're, if most of us, if we're dating somebody that's a millionaire. We're not going to go on some show and fight with bitches all day for a dollar and 25 cents. Right? I think that's where Aubrey was getting. Bianca, I just, unless she's just looking to build her resume, unless Bianca's just looking for the fame of it all. Um, And I want to know who the man is. Because she kept saying, she said, Aubrey pretty much was trying to clock, you know, well, maybe he's lying to you. Maybe he's not a millionaire. Um, which part of me wondered, was there a little bit of jealousy in that Aubrey? Are you hating on Bianca a little bit that she does have a millionaire man? If she does. If she does. Because Aubrey says, you know, you know, it's one thing for Aubrey to say, why do you keep saying that? But then when you say, oh, he's probably lying to you. He probably doesn't have a million dollars. Well, are you mad, Miss Aubrey? But I want to know who the man is. 
Bianca says his artist just went gold. So apparently whoever this guy is, is in the music industry, owns a record label or something, is a producer, something like that. Because she says his artist just went gold. He has the number one record. Aubrey says records don't mean money. And Bianca says it does when they got a $3 million, they signed to a $3 million deal. He has the number one record. Who had the number one record during... When were they filming Baddies Caribbean? April? Who had the number one record during the month of April 2024? Hmm. I don't know. Loving on Me by Jack Harlow is the longest longest running number one song so far of 2024. I don't know who it is. If y'all know the T, y'all know y'all are my co-host. Help me out. If y'all got the T on Miss uh, uh Miss Bianca's man, please let us know. I think it's interesting that Bianca didn't clock Aubrey too. Bianca, you kind of took that on the chin really lightly. I, w I was shocked. Now, we see Natalie do her setup scene bullshit. Anytime Natalie pulls the girls together and says, Does anybody have anything they want to get off our chest before we go to the next city, before we go to the next club, before we go to the next house? Is there anything anybody wants to get off their chest? Girl, can you get a new line? We're tired of it. Even the cast members know. I think it was Jayla who had said, Anytime Natalie says, Is there anything anybody wants to get off their chest? We know that something's coming. A fight's coming. And it's just so fake at this point. I'm so over it. Like, it's so scripted. and so, Well, not scripted, because y'all know I get mad when people say that reality TV is scripted when half of these hosts can't even remember their social security numbers, much less a script. But it's so staged at this point. Stand here, do this. Like, what? Um. So, anyway, Diamond the Body calls out Dia and Slim for being followers and being uh, bandwagoning with Tinka. Now, I agree with that. I know a lot of people aren't really feeling Diamond the Body. Um, and I understand because she has been pushing this issue a lot with Tinka Bella, and I'm over this storyline as well. But I do agree with her when she says that Dia and Slim are bandwagon bitches because y'all were on this show for, for, for y'all were literally filming for an hour and you were already defending Tinka Bella. It, um, it felt like they were on a side. It did. Now, I understand you can call people out and say, I feel like you were wrong. However, I don't think Tia. Dia and Slim really even had a true backstory on what happened, which other than getting a getting then Diamond pulling Tinka Bella's wig off at the auditions, that's all they really knew, and it seemed like they just took Tinka Bella's side because you know they had conjoining hotel rooms before production started. I don't know; it's just weird. Do y'all think Diamond the uh, Do y'all think uh, Dia and Slim are followers? All these new girls, like Jelly Bean, for example, who fought for Natalie. We see Natalie choose her later. It just seems like all these girls kiss ass. The new girls, specifically, are licking ass, doing whatever they can. And it's 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 very telling. Like, is this why Lemon Pepper chose y'all? Because y'all are so willing to do whatever to get on the show? Is that why he chose y'all? It makes me wonder what else you girls were willing to do to get that final spot. Girls, are we giving up the pussy for a spot on the show? I'm just asking the question the people want to know. And then we see Diamond the Body at one point is fighting Tinka. She's fighting Slim. She's fighting Dia. I'm like, okay, Diamond is taking them all on one by one. Line them up, right? And then Meatball wants to try to run in. And I'm like, see, if this is what we're going to do all season, y'all shouldn't have casted these two girls. If they are really sisters, like they're saying that they are, and, you know, they're going to have this alliance together, and they're going to be jumping in on one another. I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. Um, now, the big Kiva versus Tinkabella moment was a little odd. Um, 
because it seemed like to me that Big Kiva was trying to make sure that she didn't fade in the background. Because think about it. Up until this episode, have we really seen anything from Big Kiva? It almost makes me think that Kiva got word that somebody was going home that night. So she was like, let me step it up. And I have to respect her for that. Even though I didn't agree with her why she stepped forward. Because she told Tinkerbell, like, I have an issue. This is the issue. Let's fight it out. And then we can hug it out after. Like, what? You just wanting to fight for no reason. Let's just say it. You're you're wanting a fight, so you can so you can say, pick me, choose me. Hey, look, I can fight. I can scrap. I can get in the mud too. I'm not a boring basic basic ass bitch. Choose me. And it worked for her, so I can't blame her for that. But that shit with Tinka was not authentic. Hell, they were damn near hunching and fucking and licking and scrubbing on the damn floor. Um. When the fight was over, when they hugged it out, they was damn near hunching on one another. I think even Tinkabella wanted to kiss Kiva until she realized that there was that you know she was filming. She almost forgot she was filming a reality show. I got on fighting and hunch on one another. Ain't that some couple shit? Now Nunu versus Dia. Dia, baby, give it up. 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 Give it up, sis, because you look pathetic. Dia, you are probably, next to Gretchen, you, you're you going out sad. You look pathetic. You look sad. You look desperate. You look thirsty. You look dehydrated. You look parched. You want to be a star so bad, and it's not giving that. It's not giving star. It's not, baby. I'm just going to be real with you. Like, some people got it, and some people don't. And, Dia, you just don't got it. You don't. You try, but it don't, it don't, it, like, it, it, you're not a baddie. You never was. You got an accent that's, you know, I guess you think that makes you hot shit. But every time we see you fighting, you get your ass beat. Like, literally, she had blood running down her nose. Nunu fucked her up. And after she got her ass beat, then she talking about, I'm not no fighter. I'm not no fighter. Wait a minute. You're not a fighter. Miss Bahamas. You're not a fighter. Miss Caribbean. You came on baddies. What are you doing here? I'm confused. This show is not called Saddies. It's Baddies, Dia. What are you doing here? She's one of my least favorite cast members. Next to Gretchen. Bye, Dia. You gotta go. That's why I'm shocked that we saw Heaven Marina go home. And we could have sent bitches like Gretchen and motherfucking... What's her name home? See, I forgot her name that quick. And then, on top of that, after Dia gets her ass whooped, after her face is bloody, she's sitting back. See, it's always the ones that get their asses whooped that be talking shit after. Because Dia's talking about, ask about me, bro. Ask about me. What? What do we need to ask about you for? Everything we need to know, we can see right in front of our faces. That you a weak-ass, punk-ass bitch. Like, what? You got a busted nose, sis. The only way I would do a show like this is if I got the Aubrey contract. The only way I would do a Zeus show or a Now That's TV show, I need the Aubrey contract, please. Nobody puts their hands on me. I will sit around. I will drink. I will smoke. I will cut up. I'll give you good confessionals. I'll be my jolly, nice, happy, fun self. But I ain't fighting none of these ratchet hoes for shit. There ain't enough money. Like the only, I took it back. The only second stipulation to me doing a show like this would be the bag would have to be big. And I'm talking six figures. I'm talking six figures. If I'm going to, if I'm going to be beaten on or have to fight every day, I'm going to need to know that the money coming in is going to be able to cover any medical bills that I may have to cover. And then not only cover medical bills, I need money on top of that for my pain and my suffering and my emotional distress. Now, Natalie says that Aubrey is going to help her choose which girls get to stay. So, we see we see that Aubrey ends up saying that, you know, she 
Natalie tells her to choose one girl that she thinks that she should stay based off of, you know, their interaction since she's big here. And Aubrey chooses Big Kiva, which shocks the fuck out of me, which I, I thought a few things. Either A, producers told Aubrey to choose Big Kiva, which doesn't make sense. Or B, maybe Aubrey just really had moments with Big Kiva that we didn't see on screen. Maybe they had really relatable moments. Do y'all know what I mean? Because for the life of me, I could not understand why she chose Big Kiva. And then she says, one of the things Aubrey says is, I like how when you fought, you hugged it out right after. And I'm like, yeah, because the shit was fake. The shit was fraudulent, Aubrey. What do you mean? There was no beef. There was no real fight. They wanted to fuck. They wanted to put their bodies on one another. That's what that was all about. So we see Natalie end up, you know, choosing the girls that she wants to pick i don't know why in my notes i put natalie chooses jelly roll because she kissed ass i meant jelly bean natalie chooses jelly bean which i feel like there's more to that you know we saw jelly bean fight for natalie at one point during this season which i'm like oh my god how much more of a kiss ass can you be but actually jelly bean has jelly bean and natalie have ties i feel like jelly bean knew natalie was was jelly bean one of the dubai girls was Jelly Bean one of Natalie's whores? Because that's what it's giving me. Because here's the thing. When Taseki approached... When we when we seen Taseki run up on um, Jelly Bean this episode. And what, when they were going back and forth arguing Jelly Bean and Taseki. Taseki mentions at Bad vs. Wild the only reason she didn't run up on Jelly Bean was because Natalie said that's my friend. So Natalie knew jelly bean back during bad versus wild because the auditions hadn't happened then so i think that jelly bean possibly was a dubai girl allegedly maybe she's worked for natalie and she got a spot on baddies because she knew natalie favoritism that's what it boils down to because jelly bean really don't have that much of a personality to be on tv let's just be real and how the fuck did J.O. Listen, I want J.O. I want to give more of a chance to. I want to learn more from. I feel like there's more there that we need to see that we haven't really scratched the surface on. But I was shocked that J.O. and Kiva got chosen over Heaven Marina. But then again, Heaven Marina hasn't done as much in scene as J.O. But Heaven Marina, I feel like, does good in confessionals. I feel like she does really good in confessionals. Um... And if you think about it, Heaven Marina and Windali, 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 they didn't really get into any fights. I know Heaven got in a little bit of a scuffle, but we didn't really, we didn't see them really fight. So I think that's why they got sent home. It's because Zeus knows they're not going to be thirst buckets and fight at the drop of a hat. Um, now, Windali, I understand not getting chosen, right? She was a lame hoe. I tried to give her a chance. Go back, watch episode one. I told y'all I was glad Wendell Lee got chosen. I said, I'm glad. I said, she seems kind of normal. And that was the problem. She's too normal for reality TV. Sorry, Wendell Lee. You're better off as, you know, a, a, a nurse, a front desk receptionist, a teacher, um, a flight attendant, something like that. T TV, I don't think that's your, 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 the move, boo. Um, Unlike with Heaven, I feel like there was more to see from Heaven Marina. Wendelie, we've seen all we could see, boo. You're lame, you're boring, and after you defended Gretchen, we ain't got nothing else to see. Because that, that show. Wendelie, you're the type of friends that Gretchen has back home that enables her bullshit and that lets her say the N word. So that's why we can't fuck with you. Um, now, let's talk about the dinner between Callie, Taseki, Tommy, Biggie, and Mariah Lynn. Let's talk about that contrived and planned dinner that the producers had them set down and go to so they could have some drama, so they could have Natalie be upset, right? Um, and here's how I know it was all fake and planned, because Mariah, Taseki, Tommy, Biggie, and Callie are never going to sit down for dinner together. That's number one. Number two, going into the dinner, Mariah says, I'm really cool with Nat, so I don't want anyone to feel no type of way. Girl, we already know you're a flip flop. You're and you're loyal to no one. So miss me with that. I hope Natalie slaps you. Um, but really, her saying that was like, okay, that's my cue. They're trying to build up to the storyline of, oh, Natalie's gonna be upset that they went to this dinner with Tommy, right? Because truth be told, I don't think Mariah would have went to that dinner, but producers probably wanted her to. Um, but she could have easily said no. 
I'm I'm loyal to this side. I don't fuck with Tommy, but that's how Mariah is. Like a fish. It's when you catch a fish and you drop it on 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 land. That's Mariah. Now, when Tommy gets to the dinner, one of the things that she says that I liked is she was like, you know, this shit that we're doing, this is not real life. We are ladies. In real life, we're not going to see someone look at us the wrong way in the airport and then swing on them. Now, I was glad she acknowledged that until, Tommy, did you not just get arrested yesterday because somebody looked at you the wrong way, allegedly, and you swung on them? Listen, I don't know if that's true. That's why I say allegedly, but I'm going to do a whole video about it so y'all can see. Tommy, allegedly, somebody was looking at her the wrong way. That's what the video says. Or they wouldn't they wouldn't answer her. They wouldn't acknowledge her or something. And she got physical while in Miami with somebody. That's what they're saying. But what she said on baddies, I'm not going to negate that because that shit ain't real life. We don't, somebody don't look at us the wrong way and we just fight them. We don't just be fighting at drops of a hat. But this show Baddies makes people think this shit's real life. This is what a baddie does. No. Real life baddies ain't out here fighting, looking a fucking fool. Real life baddies are getting money, looking good, smelling good, traveling, working hard, eating good. You know, come on now. Can somebody get an Amen. And by the way, at this dinner scene, Biggie and Taseki, you can tell that y'all ain't from the South. You can tell that y'all from somewhere else. Because y'all, y'all, you can tell y'all ain't had no grandmas or no aunties to tell y'all, don't you put your purse on the floor. And is that a Southern thing? Because I be thinking a lot of shit just be Southern shit. Um, because, you know, we have our own ways down here, just like every part of the country has their own ways. But y'all ain't never heard that. Don't put your bag or your purse on the floor. It's bad luck, number one. And number two, like, you don't want to, like, people walk on that. I don't want my bag on shit. People walk, uh, I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe it's just a superstition in me. Now, Tommy brings up that, you know, Natalie says that she's done coke before. The topic of conversation is Natalie. Um, and Tommy says that, you know, she's never snorted coke a day in her life. And that's like, you know, when she got arrested recently, I commented and I said, Tommy's mugshot looks gorgeous, but the coke be coking every time. And people were coming at me like, she doesn't do coke. Why do y'all always say she does coke? Why does y'all's go to always co cocaine? One? I'm just, I'm just saying, what, was she not arrested for it last year? Did she not get go to jail for having a little bit of cocaine on her or something like that something dealing with cocaine and y'all act like tommy don't act erratic as fuck sometimes how else do you explain behavior like that it's either drunk coke something allegedly if tommy says she's never done coke in her life we're gonna go with it okay we just gonna roll with it. Now the way she, the way Tommy told them people behind her, them ladies at that table behind her, yeah, get the fuck on out of here. This conversation ain't for y'all anyway, bitch. I was hollering. I was hollering, okay? <laughs> Cause that's some shit I would do, low key. If I heard somebody talking shit behind me at the table or something, I'd be like, "Yeah, bitch, get the fuck up out of here, then, ho." Um, cause those women did look like they weren't too pleased cause Tommy was talking a little loud, you know, she was talking loud. I ain't never done cocaine in my mother, you know, and, but then again, you don't have to, if you're eating in a restaurant and a camera crew is there filming a show, all you have to do is say, Hey, excuse me, ma'am. Can I waitress? Can I sit over here? I don't want to be involved in the television. It seemed like those ladies wanted their little 15 minutes to be in, the, be in the frame, and then they didn't want the entire deal that they purchased. Or maybe it's different in Barbados. Maybe you don't have to, you know, get anybody's consent to have them on camera, and they just walked in and was filming and sat down, and those ladies got caught up in the mix. I don't know. But the the, the scene with Tommy was funny. Now, she says it's her last night here, which confused me because I'm like, wait, huh? You just got here. 
I didn't want Tommy to leave. I feel like Tommy's very entertaining. She's a hot mess, like me, and I love me a hot mess. Um, but she was literally in two episodes and probably got paid no telling what. I'm like, you filmed two whole scenes, Tommy. You're leaving already? Anyway, we later on see Nat in the living room of the house in Barbados, and she's got all the girls together, and, you know, she's setting up the scene. Oh, I'm mad that Biggie went to dinner with Tommy, and she took Tasecki, and she took, you know, Mariah Lynn. Now, she she's mad that they went to this dinner with Tommy, but she's mainly focused on Biggie. Biggie, 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 Biggie. She doesn't really bring up Tasecki, Mariah Lynn, Callie and them that much. Why were why weren't you pressing Callie and Tasecki the way you were pressing Biggie, Natalie? I mean, we just want to know. We just want to know. You know, like I told y'all earlier, production made sure that Biggie and the other girls didn't go with Natalie. And the others on the nature walk. They made sure that Biggie and the other girls did this sit down with Tommy. Um, now see, Biggie can't say that. Biggie can't say in the scene when Natalie confronts her, "Why didn't you come to the nature walk?" Well, production wanted me to go eat with Tommy. She can't say that. I mean, she can, but they're not going to edit it. I mean, they're not going to include it in the show, right? Well, I don't know Zeus might because they're that sloppy and lazy. But um, conveniently, the girls walk in as Natalie is talking about them, right? Natalie's talking to the other girls. I'm pissed. I'm upset. Biggie's went to dinner with Tommy. How are you here with me on my show, my experience, and you're out to eat with my ops? And then conveniently, here walks in Biggie and Tasecki and them. Um and, you know, they're hugging everybody. Now, I think it was whack as fuck what Taseki did. Taseki's walking in. She's hugging everybody. And then she runs up on Jelly Bean and attacks this girl. Again. For the second time, right? And I'm just like, Taseki, what is the issue? Is there something deeper here that we don't know? Did this girl fuck your man? Did she suck his dick? Did she eat his booty? Um, uh, did you catch them texting? Give us more because what you're giving us does not validate the the response that you're giving. Why are you be it? You're giving bully vibes. It's like, oh, this girl's not swinging back. Let me keep hitting her because I want my moment. Let me keep hitting her so I can show out on TV. Are you taking your anger out on something else? You should be mad at that man of yours. That I heard is not even that good looking. Like, I, and what, we don't even know who he is. Why are you so pressed thinking everybody wants your man? And see, Taseki, I liked you a lot. And I still like you. But I'm looking at you sideways now. Whole so phony got me looking at him sideways. It'll never be the same motherfucker the old days. Okay? Because that's why I'm looking at you like, Taseki. Leave Jelly Bean alone. She's told you she don't want your man. Maybe your man wants her, and that's the real problem. And Jelly Bean, are you slow? Are you slow, mama? Get up. Fight this hoe back. You're on baddies. Why do y'all let people just hit y'all, and y'all don't do nothing about it? Biggie, Jelly Bean, why do y'all just sit there and let folks hit y'all, but then you claim to be baddies, and you claim to be hard. I'm a thug. I'm this. I'm... You sat there smiling, wondering if Taseki was about to hug you. Taseki literally standing above her. And here go Jelly Bean. Girl, if you don't get the fuck up and stand up and be ready. If my op is walking near me, I'm not going to sit there and go. <sighs> I've just lost respect for Taseki, that's all. And maybe a producer put a battery in her back. You got issues with Jelly Bean? Oh, run up on her tonight when you guys get back. Maybe that's what happened. I don't know. But if you're a baddie like you say you are, Jelly Bean, stand on that shit and fucking own it and fight the fuck back. Now, Natalie asks what the issue is. Taseki says, just because I was drunk doesn't mean I didn't mean what I meant. And I'm just like, which one is it, Taseki? Because didn't you say you never said you were drunk? You never claimed you were drunk. Now you're saying that you're drunk. Like, you, you, you. 
I don't know. I just, I don't know. And then, the way, let's go back to Natalie. Natalie is coming at Biggie for not coming on the nature walk. You you went to dinner with Tom. Where is the energy for Callie and Taseki, Natalie? This is why we can't stand you. This is why we can't fuck with you, Natalie. Because you, just like Jayla, y'all pick on people that you feel like you can pick on. The Biggies. The Jelly Beans. Pick on somebody your own fucking size. How about that? Pick on somebody that's going to fight your ass back. That's going to handle you the way you're trying to handle them. It's so weird to me because Biggie's not the only one that went to dinner with Tommy. Callie. Mariah Lynn. Taseki. Taseki, however you say her name. Biggie says that Natalie shapeshifts a lot. And I'm like, that's a perfect word for Miss Nunn. Natalie shapeshifter Nunn. I, I 100% agree with Biggie on that. I 100% agree with Biggie on that. Now, Natalie says that Biggie makes the fans think that Natalie isn't there for her. And I'm like, no. No. You, Natalie, you make us think that you're not there for Biggie. I'm not the biggest Biggie fan, but it's clear as day that you don't like the girl. It's clear... Um, it's clear as day that you don't like the girl and you never want her. You never wanted her on the show. You never really wanted her on the show. You didn't, you definitely didn't want her to come back. Lemon Pepper overrided your decision because he owns baddies. He owns the rights to baddies. That's Lemon Pepper's show. Lemon Pepper said, I want Callie on the show. I want Biggie on the show. I want Tommy on the show because he's trying to do what's best for the show. If it was up to Natalie, she would have all her best friends around her kissing her ass. Jayla says that she hit Biggie again because she was triggered by Biggie. But Jayla, just be real. Like that's why I can't fuck with you. You weren't triggered by anything. You hit Biggie again for some TV shit. Just be real, say Biggie. You know what? I hit you on some TV shit. I really did. My girl, my Claremont twins were there. My girls was there. I was trying to make a good show. I'm trying to show them what the baddies is about. But you can't do that because you you're fake, Jayla. You're fake. You were not triggered by by Biggie. Now we see the girls go do an appearance at some place in Barbados, some some something, some nightclub, some something. I don't know. Um, and it was also weird. The event was just also weird because the girls started handing out twenty dollar bills, and the crowd obviously was going crazy. They're like trying to grab the money, and I'm like, could we not have done a giveaway? Could we not have done a contest? I mean. Diamond the Body had to get on the mic and say, look, why don't we do a dance contest? Why don't we, you know, why are, why are the girls having to produce the show? Where are the producers? Why do y'all have these girls handing out American money now? Y'all got these girls handing American U.S. dollars out to people in Barbados. What they going to do with that? What, what, what they going to do with that, with American money? I guess take it to the currency exchange i i don't know it was just all so weird to me like it was all so weird to me and of course nothing that the zeus network does is organized nobody thought this out it was literally just hey y'all we're going to this club tonight let's show up to it nobody thought it out nobody planned with organizers nobody got with club promoters nobody said this is what we're going to do this is where we're going to stand this is how it's going to go handing out the money is going to be like this the giveaway is going to be like this I would have done baddies trivia or something. You know, we're going to ask a question. Whoever knows the answer is going to get cash. On season two, who did Krishan mop up in the sink? Yes, you, sir. Who? Persuasion. You're right. Here's your $100. You see how simple that would be? It's just a hot fucking mess, and they ain't learned shit in five seasons. Zeus ain't learned nothing in five seasons, okay? Usually, you grow as you go, but Zeus just stays stagnant as fuck. Same old or unorganized, sloppy-ass shit. They just got more money. That's all. 
Now listen, if you like this recap and you like what you heard, please click that subscribe button. Click my face down there and it will take you to the page where you can subscribe to the channel so you never miss a beat. Turn on your post notifications too, if you guys do not mind. Also, click that thumbs up button right down there and like this video. That helps me get into the YouTube algorithm. Get in the comment section and join the conversation because your voice and opinion matters. I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions all on this episode from the fights to the shade to the drama of it all. Leave me your thoughts and opinions, okay? Also, if you would like to donate to the Damien After Dark movement and help us sustain and grow this podcast, in the description box below will be some ways that you can donate using PayPal, Cash App, Venmo, and Zelle. I'll also post my Amazon wish list. Please be mindful that YouTube does take 50% of the money you guys donate when you leave a super chat, okay? If you leave a super chat, YouTube will take 50%. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you next time on Damien After Dark.